Another kayak fishing adventure. Me and Die Hard Fishing are out at Half Moon Bay. It's a three foot swell today. I think there's no wind all day. It's like six mile an hour max or something crazy like that. I'm all geared up. Got my three millimeter wetsuit on, a three millimeter vest, Farmer John style. Got swim baits. That's the main thing I'm going to use as artificial. I didn't bring any squid or anything, no anchovies, but I do have this salmon roe from that salmon that I caught up in Crescent City a couple weeks ago. Really never been out in the ocean on a kayak other than down south a little bit that one time and a lot of people were complaining about the safety issues and all the safety gear that I didn't have. Well, today I'm a little bit more geared up. Got the wetsuit just in case I flip over. But I never come out here unless it's super, super calm because I'm not that comfortable in the water. Probably the next thing I'm going to get is a dry suit. But for now, I'll just choose the extremely low swell days, extremely low wind days, and I won't venture off too far. And look at this boat right here. Dude, how much do you think that thing costs? A couple million maybe? Dude, this thing is nice. Shoot. Probably sleeping in there right now. Damn, that's hella nice. All those guys out there, they all live in their boats. All right, we're going out to the ocean. I see a couple kayakers out there already. So we're gonna drop a crab pot out here somewhere and then head out to the right side. And that's where it should get a little shallow and rocky. Maybe there's some reef out there. And yeah, drop my swim bait, drop some salmon row. We're good. Well, die hard, he went out and dropped his crab pot. I had to take off my sweater because it was just too hot out here. So I swear he's like a mile away from me right now. I'm all alone out here in the middle of the ocean and nobody around me. But I see the buoys out there. I don't know if you can see it on the GoPro, but there's a green buoy and a red buoy. I'm just gonna go over there myself and meet up Die Hard later. Don't see any bait jumping though. So I think it's gonna be all swim baits and all salmon row. Look at that salmon row. Oh, there's some bait right there. Oh no, that's a bird, bird crap in the water. All right, almost to the buoy. All right guys, I've been out here for about 20 minutes by myself. I see a big kelp bed right here. I might throw down some salmon row. Now I don't have a fish finder, but I do have some technology. Got my phone and I've got satellite images on Google. So if I look at Google, I don't know if you can see from the GoPro, but it shows the reef in satellite view so my plan is just to paddle on over right over that reef and i know there's structure there so i'm gonna drop down and hope that there's fish but there's kelp all around me right here so i'm actually gonna tie on some salmon row and i'm just gonna drift over this kelp and see what if there's any fish hanging out i don't feel like there's gonna be any lingcod here i could be wrong but i feel like more likely it's just gonna be some sort of rockfish. So I think a rockfish is more likely to bite on this salmon row than it is to bite on a swim bait. My leader with an egg loop knot, and this egg loop knot, you push, after you tie it, you can push your leader material through, there, so it makes a loop, and you put your eggs through that loop, and then you just tighten up the loop, and that's why they call it an egg loop knot. Now anything around should bite on that. Actually, let me get all that row on that knot, on that loop. I'm gonna do maybe two or three drifts right over this kelp, and then I'm gonna paddle out to the reef on Google Maps. Shoot, if I was a fish and I saw this salmon row, I would bite it. There's some structure down there. It's hard for sure, it's not sand. I think all this, all this structure, that's where all this kelp is grown out of. Feel like I'm in a movie right now. I feel like this is a good drift though. It's like right over the kelp, right over this structure, right over the rocks. Dude, how could there be no fish right now? No bites on this row. Been at it for 10 minutes. Not a bite. One tip that I got from the last kayak video I did was you don't want to necessarily hold your pole like this because if you do get a big fish and your drag is set tight, you can just roll over. So people were suggesting like, keep your rod in front of you, which makes sense. All right, I'm gonna continue out to that reef. Nice. What is that? Oh yeah, on the swim bait? Swim bait? 
Nice. Nice. Alright guys. There's this huge reef that stretches for miles, it looks like. Right under us. Right under me right now. And here comes Die Hard. We're going to get some right now. I'm going to keep the cameras rolling so I don't lose another one. I'm pretty sure I just missed a big ling. I was struggling to turn the cameras on and stuff. Couldn't didn't set the hook hard enough. But this is the spot right here. I'm going to call it right now. There's fish. Oh, I lost him again. Damn it. Oh my god. How the hell did that happen? Probably wasn't a monster, but you know, felt good. All on the tail too. They're all hitting the tail. That's the second fish lost. There he is. Finally. There he is. He's back. Oh, that's a good one. It's probably a good ling right there. Pretty sure that's a keeper. Whatever it is, I think. <sighs> Had one too, just the, la the previous cast. That's a big cab. <sighs> that's like a... Oh, nice. Yeah, that's a nice cab right there. Ooh, that's good. Alright, let's measure him. Let's see how long he is. 19 inches. So cool, that blue color. Oh, swim baits are all messed up. We'll use this one until it falls apart though. Just finding bottom and yeah, just reeling it in, making sure not to drag bottom but just a slow retrieve right on the bottom stopping every once in a while hitting bottom again and doing it all over again there's another one oh there's a good one i don't know if this is another cab or a ling or what let's see good size though Definitely not a rockfish. <sighs> Heavy, he's got some weight on him. Oh man. Good sized fish, whatever it is. <sighs> oh man. What the heck is this? My arm's getting tired. Oh dang, another cab. Oh, take a run for it. Jeez. Another cab, same. It's, I got its twin, dude. Spitting up some squid. Another one. Freaking same freaking thing. Look what he's been eating too. Some octopus. Yeah, his twin, his identical twin. Yeah, this one's bigger. Probably can lay a bunch of eggs. So I'm just gonna release this big one. Keep the one I killed already. And we're gonna have that one for lunch. Yeah, man, this is nice. Look, these two pretty much identical. Well, before we release this one, let's measure this one. See how big this one is. I think the other one was 19 or 20. Yeah, this one's 20, 20 and a half. Probably like, I don't know, four pounds maybe? I don't know, honestly. But let her live another day.
Man, the swim bait is tore up now. So you can keep 10 rockfish a day, uh, two lingcod and three cabazon, but I've got enough fish in my fridge and this cabazon is enough for me and Adam for sure and we'll probably have leftovers. Both really nice and blue. Look at that blue mouth inside. This meat is blue, but once you cook it, it turns white. No scales on them either. Really cool fish. There's a little fish. I think I have one. Feels like very slightly heavy. I think I do. Yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Dude, never seen a link that small. <laughs> Thought I had one though. All right, well guys, I'm heading back in right now. Got this nice cab between my legs, release that other one. Me and Adam, we're gonna cook this cabazon up back on shore. He's got a YouTube channel himself. It's called Die Hard Fishing. And I don't know how he has less than 2,000 subscribers right now. Like for real, like he has one video where he went out by himself and he caught a salmon on a kayak. He didn't even have a net and he landed it just by bare handing it. Like he's got some crazy stuff on his channel. So die hard fishing, check out his channel. Spread that love, you know, tips and tricks. If you're into that, you know, that's a good source to get that info. So I'm headed back right now. Starting to feel a little bit woozy. And uh, we are gonna cook that fish up and get some food in our bellies and that'll make me feel better at least. So Adam is just coming in right now. I've been back on shore for a little while. While he comes up and gets his kayak all settled, let me show you this cabazon and let me gut it and clean it for you. So just check out how blue this meat is. You don't see turquoise blue meat like this normally. Now when I say normally, I just mean on other types of fish. I mean, it's pretty common on these cabazon and lingcod, but on other types of fish, you don't see that bright blue pattern very often. And the entire fish is colored like that, inside and out, the organs and everything. Man, that's like such a bright blue. It almost looks like bubble gum or something. So these Ha these cabazon, they've got these spines right here. They really camouflage in. They're hard to see, but they're right here. They're really hard. If this was to lay out in the sun and all the skin and everything were to, to deteriorate off, what would be left are these sharp spines right here. And there's venom inside those spines. If you get poked while you're handling this fish, you can get your, your entire arm will just start to feel numb. Um, I honestly forgot what's the proper way to treat that. You either put it in very hot water or very cold water. I believe it's very hot water and you do that over and over again to leach your skin of the... I'm not 100% sure so don't take my word for that. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that poison. We're here to cut this fish up and eat it. Cool thing about these cabazons is that they don't have any scales. So when me and Adam cook them up, I want to keep the skin on, but I'll score the skin. So when I put it in that butter or however we cook it, it doesn't curl up. It'll just curl up on that little portion that's scored. You don't need to worry about any of that venom when you eat it too. It's just in the head. Only if you get pricked when you're handling it, that's the only time that you'll be exposed to it. You feel the pin bones right here. They run all the way back to right here. You can even see them poking out of there. Just cut there, cut all the way back to the head. Look at that meat. Look how blue that meat is. Look, everything is blue, including its, its stomach, which is here. Let's fillet it first and then we'll take a look inside. Once you get to the tail, it's pretty flat. The uh, spine in the center doesn't come up too much, so you can just cut straight across. Come out the back and then you, you want to keep a little pressure on the fish against the bones so you peel back with your left hand if you're right-handed and then just use that knife and just run it across the meat. You know, I don't mind taking my time on the fillets. I don't know why everybody makes a big deal about it. So this was a female. These are the eggs. But, and that's the reason why I let the other one go. The other one was blue too and most likely it was a female 
and most likely it had even more eggs than this. And the thing about cabazon eggs is that they are poisonous for human consumption, so you do not want to eat cabazon eggs. Now real quick, let's take a look what's inside his stomach, inside her stomach, should I say. I bet you there's a crab in here. Actually, I should probably fillet it first. Let me finish filleting it first. All right guys, those are two, two of the fillets. Bright blue meat. Once you cook it though, it's gonna turn white. We already saw that she spit up an octopus out there. Let's see if she got anything else in her stomach. They normally eat crabs and, and some really small kelp fish. And there you see the remains of a small crab. You can see its claw right there. Little rock crab. I know a lot of people who go on these charter boats, they'll ask for all the carcasses when the fillets are done so they can bring it home and make soups. But since we're out here, I'm just gonna give it back to mother nature and let the crabs and the other fish feed on this. How do you do, any crabs? Oh yeah, one keeper crab. Dang, not, not that big, huh? Just, uh, it was like six well, that's a nice rock fish though. So Adam's gonna clean up his fish. He's gonna cook, cook them up here too. He's gonna do some charcoal. So I'm gonna get set up and we're gonna start some coals and we'll have ourselves two different types of fish. I don't know if he's gonna cook the rockfish or the cab. We will find out shortly. Butter, salt, pepper, and garlic. Man, it's calm out here. Thank you. 